So I thought maybe we could start off with um, some of you were actually um, here for the speakers and um, maybe we could talk a little bit about what your thoughts were, what some of your reactions were. I know Stan, you had the most um, time with, uh, with Bill and Malcolm. Yeah. Um, I guess just to start off with a couple of my reactions was I, first of all, if anyone talked to me afterwards, I was kind of bouncing around because I was really excited by the conversations, talking about kind of the differences between our generation and then entering a workplace where the kind of mentors that you're looking at grew up in something that was a little different was for me something that I've never thought about explicitly. I've never thought about, okay, what is the difference between the way that we've grown up and what the world was when kind of we're in school now and then what was the world when um, the people we'll be working for and working with, hopefully, um, well, how is it different for them? And I think that there will be, it will be part of the conversation as we go here, um, so I won't spend too much time thinking about my personal thoughts on it, but, <laughs> yeah. With anybody um, else um, here for any, of the, um, any other comments on the prior speakers? Now, maybe we can get into a little bit about um, the positions that you're going into and what some of the considerations were, a little bit about the process of um, how you were chosen, how you chose them, etc. Who wants to, Ananya, do, would you like to start? Sure. Okay. Um, so I interned at Microsoft the summer after my junior year, so I think that's what really helped me decide whether I wanted to go there or not. But the biggest things when I was making my decisions were, like, part just these four years being at Olin, you really learn to introspect a lot and try and learn and just think more about what you want to do long term. And my long term goals, which is a lot more to say to do with design thinking and changing the way companies actually approach problems, is very far from the kind of work I'll be doing at Microsoft. But one something I realized was that the skills I learned in this one year at Microsoft, and especially the kind of responsibilities they give entry-level employees is something that isn't very shared across most other companies. So I'll grow more as a person here than I would elsewhere, but I just have to always make sure that I'd be ready to leave, which is my biggest reason why I applied to business school before graduation too, just so it's very easy for me to leave in two years and not get caught up in the process of like liking the company more and more because my summer there convinced me that Microsoft was a great place for me to be. Can you give us some specifics on what, uh, you know, some examples of what you felt were unique? So um, the summer, I guess soon after the summer they were coming out with Windows 8, which was, um, or at least to the developers, sh showcasing what the new Windows platform would be like. And they had, they allowed all, um, all the front facing applications they built were all built by interns. So I worked with another intern to build one of the only, one of the, I guess, 20 applications that were shared with developers to show them what you could do with Windows 8. So in some ways that just, that um, just spoke for itself on the kind of responsibilities you would get. But the second was just the people. Like similar to Olin, I was just surrounded by people where I was constantly learning a lot from everyone around me. And just that kind of mentorship and the people convinced me. That was the right place. Thank you. Chris, could you tell us a little bit about your journey? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so we're, we both did internships this past summer, and uh, I was an intern in the Office Shared Services Division. My team was the Delivery and Services Infrastructure Team, which is very much of deployment and installation of Office, which sounds really uninteresting, at least to me, because <laughs> it's like not actually making the software, but how do we get it out there? But it's a really fascinating problem, so I had a lot of fun. Um, over the summer, and I was able to um, basically, you know, they, they extended an offer, and then I said, I'd like to go somewhere else. They're fine with that. And what's really nice is that despite the fact that I didn't particularly enjoy the specific thing I was working on this past summer, I really enjoyed the kind of company environment that's there, all the resources that are, that are there, and I certainly agree with the amount of um, work that you're given, the amount of responsibility that you're given. I owned a tool this past summer that I guess I can't talk too much about, but a lot of IT admins will be using to um, deploy Microsoft Office. And it's going to be a part of IT admins' lives to actually like, know how to use this tool. And it was just kind of a cool thing to be able to, even as an intern, uh, work on something that there's somebody out there that will be using this tool a lot and needs to know how to use this tool, and it needs to be done really well. So. I love the mix as a program manager of doing a little bit of a technical design on the software as well as the user experience design and the front end design of the software, um, driving the development process along with developers and software testers as well. So for me, it was just a really great time 
even though I didn't particularly like my specific area of work, but I know going on in the future that I, I really will like it. So. Kate, can you tell us a little bit about the specific process? How did they, um, how did you find Microsoft and how did they find you? Um, yeah, sure. So, um, Microsoft recruits very heavily on this <laughs> campus. <laughs> um, and, and, and I think one of the reasons why they are so successful is, is literally they start right away. I had emails about um, interviews for full-time positions um, before I came back to campus um, to start fall semester. So right out, like, you know, the first, the first place on my mind who's, like, being like, talk to me, talk to us, like, we want you here, um, you know, those conversations for me were happening in September, um, which, which made it really difficult. I mean, I, I, I pushed off those interviews for as long as I could because I knew that my other interest was actually um, looking at something of a smaller company, of a startup, um, and those kinds of companies just can't see, you know, six months into the future. Some of them can't see three months into the future in terms of who they'll be, like, what they'll have the resources um, to hire. So, um, yeah, so Microsoft starts really early and then puts you in a decision where you, you know, you fall in love with this, this really interesting position that's a really sweet deal and you're like, well, you know what? I don't think I can be making a wrong decision here. So, um, so that's uh, a little bit of the process. To bring this back really quick to something that we've been talking about the whole day and something that Malcolm especially hit on was this idea that virtualization has changed the way that we do things. And I think a big point on this is the fact that everyone here knows what, more than 20 people who have worked at Microsoft before. And so a lot of people come into the school year knowing what the process is going to be like, knowing that people got a great experience out of it. And so it's really hard to find someone. I tried looking really hard <laughs> for someone who didn't get an enjoyable experience out of the summer at Microsoft, and I couldn't actually find one. Um, so a lot of the recruiting, it's, you can see this trend of more and more people going, and a lot of that is because our friends are going and having great times. So. <laughs> Which many CIOs have done too. <laughs> but we're better now. <laughs> I'm glad that there's, a, there's a chance that you might may, may, may get us back in the pool. So the money's but, flowing the other direction. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering, like, from a, from a, what is your longer term career? Uh, it's a great place to start, but is this where you're going to spend your life, or is this like, or, or how, how you know, for the seniors who are thinking like. Real, this is the job. <laughs> like, my parents are finally going to leave me alone. I've got a job. But, like, but like, I mean, I'm so, so what are you thinking that, that you're going to get from this Microsoft career experience? I mean, this, and I, I'm really asking a broader question is how does this new generation, the generation that's going to save us from all the crap that we did to you guys, I mean, how, 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 how do you think about your career? I'll take that. Um, <laughs> So I guess um, like the first part of that question was like, like what's your plan? Um, so my plan right now, um, eventually in the long term, I kind of like Ananya, um, I want to I wanna build my own company that does design consultancy, um, that solves problems through the approaches that I've learned at Olin. Um, and I know a part of that is going to be continued education. So grad school is definitely in my future, but it's not right now. And I, I, I just can't go to school anymore for a while. <laughs> so, so I've got to do something else. And the, you know, student loans are kind of a pesky thing. They weigh on your mind. So for me, it made sense to, um, to get a job right after school. Um, I think that one of the really appealing things, to micro, um, things about Microsoft is they seem, they seem really open to letting you climb very quickly in terms of if you show up and you perform really well, they're going to let you go as far as you can go, and it's not going to be, um, you know, well, after five years, you know, we'll talk about a promotion kind of thing. You know, they seem, they'll just let you, they'll let you go. And so that seemed really appealing to me as just a taste of um, kind of what's out there. But I mean, well, okay, so, <laughs> okay, well, no, so, 
so I'll, so I'll tell you, I mean, for me, this is why SharePoint is interesting. So, so my, my last internship was, um, was at a small software company in Boston that, um, that used SharePoint to the utmost frustration of everyone at, at the company. And so, but at the same time, um, like, if you've ever been on Twitter and, like, looked up all those, like, SharePoint con, like, hashtags, there are people who are fanatically excited about SharePoint and what it can do. And so, for me, it's a really interesting problem that, like, you have all of this capability and all of this possibility and the most frustrated users you could possibly imagine. And how do you, how do you fix that? How do you make that better? And so, I guess my... Um, like usability is like really what I get really excited about usability and user experience and so like that interesting like duality is something that like I find interesting about that product I mean it's not like you know it's not like really uh, it's not like a really sexy job right it's not like going to work for Facebook you know where you're like oh, I'm So I actually yeah. Go. What do you think for UI and usability stuff? Well, so I will say the way that I see, or I'm okay, I'll use this, but I'm <laughs> loud. Um, uh, I guess I see Microsoft as the like the past image of it was kind of the cool, not very usability, and I and I see them making a turn, and like and I see the next really cool things that are going to happen in that industry actually coming not from Apple and not from Google. But from Microsoft, um, I, I mean. You, you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly do, and I, and I think I would believe this. <laughs> or Twitter. <laughs> yeah, j just to back her up on the usability thing, it, like the, in terms of good products, well, look at the Windows Phone. That's being just being hailed by tech reviews, tech bloggers as a great product for usability. The Microsoft Connect, look, what's owning your, your living room? It's not Google and Apple. Their living room is starting to be owned by Xbox 360. And so they're starting to deliver on really great products. And that's what gets, I think, at least me excited, as well as Windows 8 is looking to be pretty cool. And they're the only guys out there who are doing UI across all platforms. Yeah. It's starting to be consistent. But, yeah. We're an unfair, like, <laughs> we're definitely a, bi a biased crowd of people. Um, and so I think uh, part of, like, there, there are seniors here who are getting full-time positions at Facebook and at yeah. Google mm -hmm. and at Twitter and at all of these companies. It's just we haven't necessarily infiltrated their system as well as we have Microsoft's yet. <laughs> and we have, like, we have to prove ourselves still. And um, that, that's coming, but, like, Microsoft knows us now, they trust us, they, they come and avidly recruit us. I don't, I don't think we're ignoring them, it's just the five of us happen to be currently ignoring them. Yeah? <laughs> Actually, they're going to sell it to the public. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's what I'm hearing out of your mind. 
Am I reading that right? Is that it? If I may take this one. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, it is definitely that. And if you expand that a little bit further, the reason that this program, this internship is so cool and the reason why people enjoy it so much is that most of it is about your growth. Like no matter if you care about the product or not, which like most people do because you're surrounded by people who are so enthusiastic about it, the fact of the matter is even in the interview process, you can tell that people who are interviewing you want you to leave that hour having learned something. And in this where you get to actually deliver for people, there's tons of job descriptions out there that are asking for people, okay, we need this product made and so do you have the skills to do this? The Microsoft program and other programs that are attracting at least Oliners seem to be more about the, okay, we have this awesome company that you get to be part of. You get to contribute to, you get to reach other people through this company as like a vehicle and that is to me what's like really compelling and totally your point, yeah. I like Bill Taylor, I don't know if he's still here, but he quotes, no one alone is as smart as everyone together. Mm -hmm. So they're truly uh, active that they, right? That's so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually curious to know how many of you interviewed for more than just Microsoft and what your experience with the other in a big company that you interviewed for. I interviewed with uh, Okay, I interviewed with three others. Um, I I did interview with Facebook, Google, and uh, Soft Artisans where Kate worked uh, last summer. And um, my experiences overall were great with all four companies um, and to varying extents. What I found interesting was that um, the, so just to tie in with the last question as well, the Google program management, uh, or it's not program management, it's product management program, uh, their associate product manager program where they pull people straight out of undergrad and th it's like a select group of people that are hailed as these could be the possible next CEOs. Not necessarily of Google, we want to encourage flexibility, but these are, these are really brilliant people. And that was a great example where Google is also showing that they're not too worried about what products they're going to make. They're caring about what is Google going to do for these people. And especially in Google's case, they really do stress, if you leave here, as well as Microsoft, if you leave here in two years, that's okay. We want you to be a better person. And along the way, we have faith in you that you're going to make great products for this company as well. So, um, at least from the Google perspective, I really saw that. At Facebook, it was a little bit more of, you're going to be changing the world through the software. And it was less on kind of your personal development, but it was still very compelling that it was very much of, um, you know, you'll be changing a lot of things and you'll have a lot of ownership over the entire product. And so, yeah, I thought it was really interesting. So um, the other companies I guess I was deciding between or was interviewing at were one was Bloom Energy which was a solar oxide fuel cell company where I worked uh, my previous summer so after my sophomore year and the reason I decided against that job was because I didn't want to work as just an engineer especially after graduation I wanted more responsibilities and play a bigger role which is why I decided against that then um, I and then I was looking at joining the Indian Institute of, one of the new Indian Institutes of Technology in India and helping them create their academic curriculum and make that very, like, they wanted to bring elements of Olin into their curriculum. I was thinking of joining them, but I realized that I think I wanted some more experience before I do something like that. And um, the other places I was considering were design consulting companies, but I didn't interview at any, and the, uh, Again, the reason I guess I didn't follow through with any of those as much was because from what I understood talking to people was that firstly, um, you j as an engineer, you join there as an engineer and after a few years work into the roles that you actually want to work as in terms of the designing roles. So I, just, so I thought that um, for now Microsoft was probably the best place for growth after college. A lot. We're like a month from graduation. You're going to make us all cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think the, I, and I don't know about Ananya and Chris or, or their experience, or Liz or Sam. I mean, they've been here for a while too. But um, I didn't really know what engineering was when I got here. I was like, Olin is really exciting from like a, like a pedagogy approach like I like how that they how they look at learning and I was like kind of good at math and science and like I'll go play here for four years and like hope something like works out well um, 
and and I and I'm 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 a design person and I'm really like excited um, to have found Olin because I don't know that I would have found design anywhere else because I don't think that there are many places that teach design at the undergrad level the way that Olin does and I think that that is you know by far one of the most special things about this place and one of the reasons um, why Olin students are such great hires for any company because they have a they have a perspective that is goes everywhere from the big picture to the details and I think that like that's a really valuable skill to have and I'm really glad that Olin set me up for that. Okay. <laughs> this place changed the way I think and I'm going to say I'm going to bounce off of the idea of like it change it teaches design differently with a story. So, okay. So there is this elevator in this building. That was taking forever. Like everyone was so annoyed that they had to wait forever and it just to get to the top it sucked. It sucked. Okay. So they brought in engineers and everyone was looking at different algorithms they could do for this elevator. But what ended up happening was they brought in an innovative designer who decided, okay, before you spend all this money on a new algorithm system that you have to totally change the controls of the elevator, we're just gonna put a mirror in the elevator. They put a mirror in the elevator and all the complaints stopped. Because they have some you know, everyone who's waiting in the elevator now has something to look at. They look at themselves and time flies by and it's okay. <laughs> So <laughs> this is the story of the difference between the way that Olin teaches and the way that traditional engineering has been taught. And it's this new idea of like you reframe a problem and you think about it creatively. And for me, like this place has done that. I, I love this place. <laughs> I think, not engineers, all the people are being. <laughs> yeah. I think something else that Olin does really well is just help you focus more on like personal growth rather than like resume building or trying to think of extrinsic motivators and I know if I'd gone to any other college I would have just been competitive would have tried only to work towards that 4.0 and cared a lot about my resume which is something you just never do at Olin like you don't know your grades until end of semester when you actually have to like say apply for jobs and you need to update your resume and that's just how it is and because you just, but you still focus a lot on learning throughout I think that's been one of my favorite parts one of my, uh, the biggest things about Olin that I've like really grown to love, I came into it a lot like Kate, like I was good at math and science, but I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, but I'm like infinitely grateful that I ended up coming here. And uh, part of it is for this design thing, like I didn't even know what design was, I didn't know I liked it, and I thought I was just gonna do like math and nothing else. And, uh, but like going into Olin and having seen it, like it just opened my eyes to an entire new world like Sam and Kate and everyone is basically just saying. Um, and I think something that's really particularly awesome about Olin is like they kind of, as long as you learn what you're kind of expected to learn, they really give you a lot of flexibility. So like last semester I had three classes that were kind of related and I talked to my three professors and they let me do a like a half semester long project um, combining all three of these classes into just like one big like jumble of one huge project and it was awesome. Um, and that's just something I don't think you could even begin to get away with anywhere else. Uh, that's just a really cool experience I had here. Okay, so it's a mathematical biology project, <laughs> um, <laughs> which, which I, it's my major and I'm still interested in that, um, but so basically I was taking a class on cancer, a numerical methods coding class, and a um, topics in bioengineering class, and I basically ended up doing this project where I did a lot of research on mathematical modeling of cancer and how we can use mathematical models to um, make more innovative treatment methods, and so I wrote a paper for one of my classes, I kind of di uh, learned about different models for another class and I ended up coding up my own model for my numerical methods class and kind of combining all three into a huge report and it was really fun. Yeah. So Liz, that's a long way from Microsoft. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and one of you is a mechanical engineer. That's a long way from Microsoft too. So help us to understand why. Um, for me, I I came into Olin saying I was going to do mathematical biology before I really knew what Olin was and what it could offer me. Um, and because of this mathematical biology thing, I started coding, um, which eventually led me to start learning my own, like more coding languages on my own time. Um, and that, in combination with all these design classes, just in the past year, have really transformed who I've become and what I enjoy. Um, and that's just something that's a product of time. I, I couldn't have known that coming in. And 
looking back now, I wish I had known that sooner because I would have really embraced that from the beginning. Um, but I, I couldn't have known. Yeah. I guess I'm looking for them to foster the community and like individual work the same way that Olin does. I, along what the lines of what everyone else has said, I think we're really looking for them to kind of just let us like do what we know how to do. We've been, we're being juniors and seniors here, we're very accustomed to just being thrown at a very ambiguous problem and figuring it out, uh, figuring out some design that can improve that and um, that's something that I personally am really looking for at Microsoft and I think I can expect based on talking to past students. Um, I'll add to that. Um, I think this might be one of those like millennial generation things. Right. Um, uh, I'm really looking for feedback. I, I don't want to just like do okay at my job. I want to rock my job. And, and I think that the way to do that is, you know, to hear a lot about how I'm doing and like what I could do be doing better or what, you know, isn't working right now. Um, and so, and I, I've, I've heard that, um, like y your mentors and your and you know the your managers are are pretty open and willing to have those conversations with you. So that's one of the things that I'm both looking for and excited about. Yeah, for me, I'm actually not looking for much that I learned out of Olin. Um, I'm looking for different things. So out of Olin, what I really love was the project-based experience and this design-oriented engineering approach. And there certainly will be that at Microsoft. I've already seen it at Microsoft. That's great, but. I think it's time in my kind of stepping stone in my career to figure out, okay, I kind of know what making software looks like and that whole process looks like. Now I want to actually practice it and try that out, see how that works. And then from there, whether it's staying at Microsoft or going to a different company, using that and using my knowledge to actually really have a stronger impact in terms of creating or having a lot of ownership over creating software that can change the world. So that's, at least for me, like, I'm looking at software as a really amazing way to change people's lives. It really has so far. And I want to be a part of that. And I think that at Microsoft, I'm not going to, at least in the next few years, I'm not going to get all of what I need. But it's certainly, a, a, you know, the next step for me. Yeah. We have a really small student sample to really <laughs> talk about that. We, I think um, our first graduate who went there was maybe like three or four years back. Mike was Docker the first person. Yeah, yeah, so I so so far I think we've only had one Oliner who's actually left the company, who's left Microsoft. But lots of Oliners I'd say have joined companies and they've changed um, their paths fairly quickly within a few years. Whether it's to leave to join a startup or to go back to grad school and just different career paths. But we only had what I think six graduate six classes graduate so far. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't much data. Thank you. 
So um, I guess I would vary a lot for individuals, but um, so I'm sure like some like even at Microsoft you can actually take classes at the universities in Seattle while working there. So there are definitely some people I think who think from that perspective. But for me personally, um, I think like if I were to go back to school, I'd like to be there full time and just based on like how involved I get on all in projects, you like to be able to devote yourself entirely. And coming back to like I'd say the bigger question about different Fortune 500 companies and all the other companies out there, I think it's there's a two-way process, right? There are some Oliners who end up going to companies like like General Electric, like GE and Rockwell and big companies like that, and some of them go there as part of rotational programs. So they're actually getting a lot out of like say different rotations and not as general engineers. But the second part is that um, not every company even comes to Olin to recruit. Mm -hmm. So. You know, even when we talk about us making all our choices, they are in the end limited choices, and we make it based on um, companies that right, are exposed. I think another point is, as much as you could kind of offer as part of the packages that would attract or in the recruitment process, there is no owner who would say no if they go to a company and they are inspired by the people there. If they walk into the doors and they can feel the energy of the company and they're surrounded by employees who like, care about what they do and care about the company as a whole, there is something that is so priceless about that that I think that is part of our generational thing of people matter the most. And all the, you know, all the benefits wouldn't, wouldn't win out over, over that, over somewhere where you're going to be growing, you're going to be thinking, you're going to constantly be challenged by your peers. So. One thing for me is that um, a lot of these hot companies are all focused around similar concepts and a lot of them today are co communication, whether it's Facebook or Skype or things like that. It's all about getting people to interact with each other digitally and that's something that I'm particularly passionate about and so it's not anything against Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 companies. I think there's a lot of great companies out there but it's really just a matter of my interest not aligning with those. Um. I'll say, um, I think that there is a lot to be said for the, those cool companies developing a sense of, it's not just a job, it's a lifestyle. And like, you know, w we can talk about like the Googlers, you know, they're on their, their Google bus in the morning and then they go there and they work all day and then they have dinner there and they have, you know, grab a couple of beers and then they work on the bus back. And, and it's more than just a job, it's, they can see, you know, <laughs> um, and and I think that you know, and I think Microsoft does that in some way. They're really plugged into the whole like you know, this is Seattle and it's outdoorsy and you know, and like you know, you get to play a lot. Um, and and I will acknowledge that you know, I I don't think that you have to make like your business doesn't have to be about a lifestyle to be like appealing. But I think that uh, a lot of companies like. I've talked to places where they've kind of gone, oh, well, you can do whatever you, you want to do, which ends up sounding a little bit like we don't really have a particular lifestyle or like, or we don't, we don't know how people have fun. We don't think about that. That's not something that's Im like, that's important to us. And so it kind of ends up being, it just, it feels bland. Whereas, you know, if you've got somebody who's like, we are working to facilitate, you know, some aspect of fun, which sounds childish, but you know, I mean, if you have a choice between a place that's fun and not fun, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I mean, I think there's something to be said for being aware that you know we're we're looking for fun. You know. <laughs> and along, along those lines, I don't think that um, money necessarily is going to override fun. Yeah. I think that's an important factor too. Like a lot of people think like, oh, if we pay them a lot, they'll come. It's, that's not really true at all. I don't think. Um, Although being paid a lot being doesn't, paid a lot doesn't <laughs> help. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, on that note, I actually have to run because I had a prior commitment. But uh, thank you all for coming. <laughs> 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 no, now, now we all have one. No more sharing.
Um, I, for me, graduate school, I think, is going to be more about um, great professors who will become great mentors. Um, so it's going to be, I think, more about the connection between faculty and student than necessarily the connection between the students. And the faculty is obviously very much a part of our lives here, but um, I acknowledge that that's a really difficult thing to recreate. It's an especially difficult thing to recreate when you have a group as diverse as graduate students who, you know, might be right out of college, might be, you know, later in life. You know, that, that's, it's hard to find that community again, and so I'm not really expecting to find it. Um, so for me, it'll probably be connections with, with faculty. I'll handle this. <laughs> so I think, um, to be realistic, I haven't necessarily thought too much about being capped at a certain point, just because that all in gender, you like, you're not prejudiced against gender in any way. So maybe that's being a little unrealistic because it's not like I haven't read many articles about how there's lots of gender prejudice. But at the same time, I'd say when I was making my decision about why I want to get an MBA, when I was trying to apply to business school, um, one of my biggest reasons was that um, after business school, I want to go back to India and start my own company. And being a young female entrepreneur, especially when I'm starting my own rather than joining my family business, is very hard. And one of my biggest reasons then for the MBA is the credentials, and it's primarily because as women entrepreneur. Yeah, so I guess, I mean, but you heard, both Ananya and I are interested in, at some point, starting our own company. So I guess, I don't know if this is like subconscious or, you know, but... Maybe if, if the fear is at some point somebody's going to stop us from moving up the ladder, then we're just going to go build our own ladder and climb to the top of that, and, and that'll be fine. Um, I, I will say that I know it's going to be different. I mean, when I was out there interviewing on site, I mean, it, it is not the 50-50 gender balance that Olin is. Um, but that being said, um, I, I think Olin sets people up really well to, um, to be aware of the issues and to kind of have that support network within, you know, within my friends here, um, with, with it, alums who I know who are going to be out in the Seattle area. So, I mean, I, I'm ready to kick butt and take names. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I totally heard that. Like, I'm not climbing the ladder. I am making my I would like to point out that 
Um, I am actually interested in Microsoft in, a lo in the long term. I'm not sure I may go somewhere else, but I don't care what I do. I just want to make sure that the software that I create and I manage is really doing something beneficial for the world. And so far, I've seen that. I, I've done a lot of entrepreneurship early, early on at Olin. Um, and so I kind of understood like what the limitations are of that and what the benefits are of that. I went to a Microsoft internship last summer just so I could get the big corporate experience and see you know, how it's good and how it's bad. And I fully expected myself to hate it. And I found it to be really amazing that you can, you can really have an impact. And so for me, you know, if I'm s still there in 20 years, that's all right with me, as long as I'm grounded in the fact that I want to make a positive impact on this world. So Microsoft has what, 20, 30, 40,000 developers? I think it's like 50, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so can you explain to us, how did you come to the conclusion that you can and do make a difference in what to see of 50,000 developers? I'm really interested in how do they create mm -hmm. that environment? So we've actually already seen a lot of this uh, with some of our graduates who have been in the core user experience team at, in, on Windows 8. And a lot of our graduates have really helped influence what the next version of Windows will look like. And certainly there are many people that help do that. But even as just starting out in their careers, they've been able to have some sort of tangible impact on the operating system. I mean, I can point to features that I know who made that. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And so seeing that is really encouraging. And then it's just a matter of time that they'll move up and start having management positions where they can make even larger decisions um, over the software that's made. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all about something tangible. It isn't necessarily big. Right. Not making a decision as to what Xbox versus the phone versus the computer looks like or the tablet. It's something there that's tangible. You say, I did that. And certainly in the long term, that's not interesting. But as starting out in your career, if you can point to something that says, you know, hundreds of millions of people use this feature, I think that's a great way to start your career, at least for me. Yeah. How many of you have engaged in some form of um, community service volunteerism in the last months? Um, I yeah, the most recent thing that I've done um, was really fun. We went over to um, North Hill, which is a retirement community um, right near Babson, um, and met with some of the residents there and, and taught them about Facebook and Twitter, which they keep hearing all about, and they wanted to know what it was. And um, that was a really amazing experience um, because there are a lot of things that like, we take for granted about, like, oh, that just makes sense. Like, you know, the browser just makes sense. It does not make sense to everybody. And, um, and so that was a really cool opportunity to kind of like step outside of, um, of like my point of view, while also just meet some really interesting people who are like, well, you know, back in my day, we wrote letters. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, for me, the community service part actually helps me realize why I actually like technology. Um, so something that I most recently did was the Need of Suicide Coalition just uh, hired someone for the Unit High School in order to create a sculpture that is only a piece piece. I don't know how many people are from the area, but there's kind of a, there's a group of high schoolers who, they had an entire assembly with um, high schoolers who were sharing kind of the experiences, the struggles that they've been through, and then it's also um, supposed to be just, you, you can take care of yourself and you take care of your community, a symbol of that. And so I'm creating a website for them in order, so that they can share and solicit more donations and also just get a cost message. And so for me, it's what has let me see what's powerful about technology. Because at first I was like, oh, there's coding, that's a cool project. Oh, like we're learning how to do this, and we made this interface. But there's kind of, that's how I learned about the meaning behind technology. Any, any other questions? Actually, just out of curiosity, what prompted that question?
nine billion dollar heiress running it. Um, it, it it's uh, very niche. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask, what do you see leads to that? Then? I'm sorry? What do you see leads to that? Kind of thinking of making a difference. I just like to see. Well, I think um, when I was in high school, my fabulous teacher was my track coach. And um, he told me at one point that he coached technique and not speed. Well, a year or two later, I realized what he was really telling me, and that you could never make me fast. <laughs> uh, but you know, speed was something that was going to and you can make a technique to make it better. Um, I think the sense of community, the sense of we need to make a difference, the sense of wanting to be out there, there is a bit of a generational cyclical element to that that I ascribe to that. And frankly, I'm comfortable by what I, what I see my children who were born to make a difference. And what I see So just to add on to that, um, I, back in high school I lived in Budapest, Hungary, and I had a lot of experience with going to an orphanage in Romania. I went there every half year or so. And I got a great relationship with these kids. And what I found was, I think it started sophomore year, these kids started adding me on Facebook. And these are orphans. And they're being given technology, very rudimentary technology, but all you need is a browser and Ethernet cable. And so that communication is just really incredible for me to be able to inspire them. Because they see me as like, wow, Chris is doing so many cool things, and I wish I could grow up to be like him one day. And giving that to an orphan is really powerful. To say, you have a future, you have possibilities that you can go to, and that communication that allows that is just something that I really want to be a part of, enable more, and see more of in the future. So I think e even though I, I don't participate in community service today, I do see it as that is the reason why I, I, I'm just really fascinated by software. Right, yeah. Uh, Chris, you got me thinking on, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, in terms of giving back to, to, to where you're from or your community or whatever, um, one of the things that we didn't talk today about was location in terms of, um, you know, in terms of choosing an employer. Um, and I know long term, and, and I think that I, I have friends who share this view, um, I'm from Montana originally, and um, there are no jobs in my state where I can do what I want to do um, right now. And I mean, I, there are probably like five. Um, <laughs> and so like one of the things that I'm looking forward to in the future um, is an employer who is, who is willing to work on uh, telecommuting with me so that I can go back to the place that I love and like where I grew up, where I'm really excited to go back to but I can't right now because there's just no opportunity there. So that's, I just wanted to throw that out there as, um, like, I want to go back and inspire people um, to pursue the kind of route that I, I pursued in terms of getting involved in loving technology. Um, but I, I, I realize that I, I don't think that there are going to be giant companies moving there, you know, tomorrow or, you know, really five years from now. So well, telecommuting, I think, is going to be a big thing. Well, to, 